Hi everyone, my name is Justin Elliker and I'm on the New Haven Board of Aldermen and I'm going to explain to you how the City of New Haven's budget works. You know, this stuff is complicated, but I think in this video I've made it pretty easy to understand and hopefully somewhat interesting. So, here we go. First, the schedule. Each winter, the mayor works with all city departments to come up with what he thinks we can afford this year. Then in early spring, he proposes a budget. The Board of Aldermen has several months to review the mayor's budget. You have an opportunity to give public testimony. And finally, in May, the Board of Aldermen amends and approves the budget. We're now in the middle of the budget cycle, where the board reviews the mayor's budget and you can testify. So let's talk about what the mayor has proposed this year. Keep in mind that it's a proposed budget and can still be amended by the Board of Aldermen. Let's start with how much we're projected to spend, $784 million. The budget's divided into three parts. The first is the general fund. In your life, the general fund would be day-to-day -day expenses like rent, groceries, utilities, cell phone bill, and going out for pizza. For the city, it's all the stuff that makes the city operate day-to-day, -day, paying for schools, police, trash pickup, libraries, parks, etc. A lot of it's people's salaries. The second part is capital funds, basically loans. In your life, this would be taking out a loan to buy a car or a mortgage to buy a house. For the city, it's the big tangible stuff, like loans for building a bridge, paving streets and sidewalks, or a loan for buying a new fire truck. The largest portion of capital funds in recent years is the loans we've taken out to build new schools. The third and final part is special funds, or grant money. For you, this might be something like a scholarship, say. It's money you don't need to pay back that is meant for a special purpose. For the city, it's things like grants for a maternal and child health program, the city's prison reentry program, or to pay for the city's home energy audit program. Most of special funds comes from the federal government and state. So that's what the mayor is proposing we spend. So where does the money come from? As I said, special funds come from federal and state grants. Capital funds come from two places. The state gives us some money to cover some of the big infrastructure projects, mostly schools. And the remaining portion of capital funds come from city loans in the form of bonds we issue. Finally, to pay for the everyday stuff in the general fund, we get a decent amount from state aid, mostly for schools, and we raise money from fees like parking tickets, parking meter revenue, passes for Lighthouse Park, and building permits. And the final portion of revenues comes from taxes. So there's your budget. And every year, I think, we tend to look at things this way. We get free money from grants, money from loans we don't have to pay for today, and then the stuff we have to pay for this year. And each budget season we testify, deliberate, and argue over the stuff we have to pay for this year. So let's start there and talk about that stuff. What do we spend on the day-to-day -day stuff to keep our city going? I think some of this might surprise you. We spend most on schools, a good portion on police and fire, and then comes public works, community services and health, libraries, parks, and youth programs. We spend 0.08% of the total general fund budget on youth programs. When we think of the city's operations, all of this stuff is the stuff we think about, the stuff we care about, right? Then there are the things that make everything happen, namely economic development. This encourages development and job growth in the city so we can increase our tax revenue and pay for those other things. Government administration, which pays for the mayors and the Board of Aldermen staff, legal services, the finance department, tax office, etc. And finally, things like workers' comp, unemployment, and self-insurance. These three categories are the things that make everything we care about happen. So we've identified the stuff we care about and the stuff that makes it happen. What's the remaining portion of the budget? Well, it's medical benefits. These are the medical costs that the city pays for its current and retired employees when they get hurt or sick. Pensions, this is what the city pays its workers who are retired. And finally, debt service. Remember I talked earlier about the money we get from loans? Well, every year we have to pay back some of the interest in principal on those loans from the past. And this amount here, like the mortgage payments you make on your house, is this year's payment to cover those loans. These three things are things we can't touch in this budget, right? We're obligated because of union contracts and past agreements to pay these things. We've got to pay our debts. So ultimately, what we have control over in this year's budget is this stuff. In other words, the day-to-day -day stuff that keeps our city running and funds the things we care about is only 64% of the budget. 
Now let's go back to 2001. Now it's no secret that our budget is bigger now than it was 10 years ago. In fact, it's about 1.5 times larger. But in 2001, we were spending 77% of the budget on those things like police and schools that we care about, and 23% on the other stuff, debt, medical, pension benefits. And each year since then, because of debt we've issued and contracts we've signed, the percentage of the budget covering the debt, pensions, and medical payments has increased, leaving less and less money for things like police and schools and libraries and youth programs. Which brings us to today, where our obligations to pay for debt, medical, and pension benefits leave only 64% for everything else. Remember how I said that each year we deliberate and argue about things in the general fund? The stuff we have to pay for this year? You can't blame us, right? We're focused on this year's priorities. Well, imagine if, instead of only focusing on the general fund back in 2001, we also focused on, for example, capital funds and didn't issue as much debt. Let's say we made some reasonable changes to the pension and medical benefit plans back then. Well, today we might be spending 23% of our budget on those things, leaving 77% of the budget instead of 64% for everything else. That's 62 million additional dollars. $62 million. We're spending $40 million from the general fund on our police force, $3.6 million on libraries, $400,000 on youth programs. With $62 million, we could have doubled the size of our police force and libraries and had a youth program that is 40 times the size it is today. But that's not all. If we had kept debt, pensions, and medical payments in check, we would have had another $62 million next year and the year after and the year after. So we could pay for those things we love and maybe even reduce our taxes. But we didn't do that in 2001, which brings me to the point. Why don't we do it today so that in 2016 or 2021, we have a fiscally healthy city and some money in the bank? The mayor's proposed budget this year has $78 million in capital funds. In other words, the Board of Aldermen will be approving the city borrowing an additional $78 million, including $42 million in new schools. $78 million is larger than any capital expenditure in the last decade. What is this going to do to our debt payments down the road? As far as pension and medical benefits go, this year all of the union contracts, except school teachers, administrators, and custodians, are up for renegotiation. Negotiations are done solely between the mayor and the unions, and there is deep distrust on both sides. Both parties need to negotiate in good faith, and the result needs to be a reasonable contract that respects employees and the fiscal health of the city. Look, we all know that it's not simple, and we've benefited from some of the decisions we've made in the past. We have incredible school buildings as a result of much of the borrowing we've done. The important thing is balance. It's time we came back into balance. Each year we spend most of our time arguing about cutting library hours, cutting the New Haven Land Trust, cutting a few positions, cutting the Christmas tree. While these things are absolutely important, we're talking about a fraction of each year's budget. It's time we address the systematic, long-term problems in our budget and embrace a long-term vision for the city.